All right, everybody, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer MGR. Um, today, I want to talk about something that I've wanted to talk about for a while, and I see it blindly parroted, and I may have been somewhat guilty of that myself at some point in time. Um, but the CARB versus EFI debate, and you can apply this to an LS engine, or you can apply this, you know, I see it in my... Toyota group, some guy put a carb on his 22RE and everyone says, you went backwards. And I see it in my Magnum groups, you know, for my Magnum 318 and my D100 and, and the same thing. Somebody says, what do I need to put a carb on? And everybody says, you're going backwards. And LS groups, you know, and it is a toilet bowl. <laughs> I get a typewriter and a Volkswagen meme. Yeah, we get all that. Um, but let's talk about, you know, I know some of you in my demographic and, you know, going 10 years older than me are far more comfortable with carbs. So let's talk about the whole thing, carb versus EFI. Not only that, I, I see a lot of people going, you know, hey, I'm having trouble with my carb. You know, I have a stumble. I have a bog. It won't idle, whatever. And the answer is to slap an EFI on it. Slap a sniper on there. Slap an FITEC on there. Um, and that's an expensive answer. You can buy two or three carbs for the price of these systems. Um, for some people, it may be the right answer. I don't know. It depends on you. For me personally, I know how to tune a carb. I know how to tune an EFI. The one time that I did use an aftermarket EFI in place of a carb, it ran almost exactly the same as it did before because I know how to tune a carb. I didn't pick up any power. Um, so let's get into this real quick. So the number one thing that people will tell you myths about carbs and myths about EFI, I want to explore in all these, but the number one thing that I see is that carbs are finicky. And that is false. Carbs hold a tune just fine. There's no need for a winter tune. There's no need for a summer tune. There's no need for a Alabama tune or a California tune. People drove their cars around with a carburetor for 100 years. They went everywhere they wanted to go in the world. They went down the Rubicon Trail. They went all over Moab. They went to British Columbia and Florida and everywhere in between. And they did not retune their carb. Your grandma didn't go out and, and set the choke differently before church. She went out there, kicked the gas pedal twice, and fired that old galaxy off and, and went to church. So... I mean, it's only when they're in disrepair and things are leaking and things like that that you start to have problems with them holding a tune. If everything's in, in correct or working order, you won't have a problem with a carburetor holding the tune, period. It'll start fine in, in the cold. It'll, I'll insert a clip of my, my truck. Daryl, this is Daryl when he had a 406. Um, let's look. It's 15 degrees outside. I'm laughing at my uh, idiot neighbor plugging in his gas truck which is kind of funny because now my very similar looking truck, that's a diesel is out there plugged in right now. Um, but yeah, this guy would plug in his gas truck every day and my carbureted 406 small block with 882 heads and uh, an RV cam kind of, you know, basic bitch 80s, 90s style build um, would fire off just fine in the 15 degree weather. Very similar to what we're having today. This is five or six years ago. So... They're not finicky, you just have to have everything working. Carbs make less power, or EFI makes more power. That is 100% false. Take a look here at some of this. Um, this is a test that Richard Holdner did for Hot Rod Magazine. Um, I don't know if it made it onto his YouTube channel or not. A lot, a lot of people don't know. He's an editor for Hot Rod Magazine, and he has a real job. But... Uh, We'll roll back down through here. It, it's a basic. I think this is a six liter. Um, so he ran it with a 750. He ran it with Holly HP EFI, which is, you know, a throttle body style. So all he had to do was swap it out, and there's the rails and the carb, and there's the throttle body. So look at these curves. They don't change. They don't matter. It, it you know... Absolute peak varied by two foot pounds. So all this other crap doesn't matter. Like, he's better at managing EFI. And it's... 
Oh, and here's a batch fire versus individual cylinder tuning. I thought that was interesting too because the main argument against uh, micro squirt is that it's batch fire and it'll suck and you'll die. And again, the curves are the same. Um, here's Dragzine did this on a 440. I don't know if this is a Chevy or what. They say it's a dark, small block. Yeah, it's a Chevy. So... Again, this is like the Howie Terminator style self-tuning EFI. Um, we can roll through here. So with a carb, the thing looks like it made. Power, it looks like it peaked at 600. Right around 6,500 and carried it out. It looks like it Peak torque was maybe 560, um, 600.7 and 558 foot-pounds. So going back to EFI, when they make 587 and 548. So they lost power in this case with the EFI, but it would run better. It would get better mileage. It, it's not going to change your life. I promise you. It's not like winning the me Mega Millions. It's like winning a $5 scratcher. The fact that you're getting 0.7 MPG better, you're never going to notice, especially in a hot rod. I just, I don't see it, especially for what they cost. Carbs or EFI are easier to tune. So you'll get this argument going both ways, and I'm pretty sure that I've made the EFI is easier to tune argument myself. And I, I rate that kind of false-ish. It's not entirely flatly untrue. It just depends on what you're comfortable with and what you know how to do. In my, I have a lot of experience with this stuff. Um, a lot of experience with carbs, not as much as EFI, a lot more experience with EFI. So I'm more comfortable with EFI. So I tend to lean that way. I, I'm comfortable navigating through all the different tables of a factory PCM. I'm comfortable with making all the changes. I'm, I'm familiar enough. I have enough carb experience to know that you can't just tune it with a screwdriver. Everybody will say that. I'll keep my carb and tune it with a screwdriver. That's because they're the type of asshole who buys whatever brand they like, Holly, Edelbrock, Carter, whatever they like, and they take it out of the box and they plop it on the engine and they set the idle screw and they set the idle mixture screw. And how, however it works internally, whatever accelerator pump is in it, whatever accelerator pump cam, whatever the choke pull-off is, whatever their timing curve is, they don't give a shit. If it doesn't run perfectly at every RPM range, they're going to blame that carb and they're going to keep taking carbs out of the box and setting the idle, the base idle and the idle error, and that's it. Until they find one they like, and then they're going to declare all the other brands garbage. Um, you have to go in and change jets sometimes. You have to go in and change power valves sometimes. It takes more than a screwdriver to do that. Um, it can be tricky. I mean, it is what it is, but it can be difficult to, to nail down a carburetor, which is what my nephew found out when he had his Corvette. And he wound up with a lot of little parts, and, and it costs, you know, it adds up. Eight bucks for some jets here, 11 bucks for some accelerator pump cams there. It, it adds up. But whatever you're most comfortable with is probably going to be easier for you. And on the flip side, the, the EFI, the self-tuning EFI, it just doesn't. It doesn't. You're not going to literally answer five questions about your engine, and that thing runs, and you never do anything with it, which is why you see all these Holly Terminator guys taking their car for a dyno tune. Why would they be taking the self-tuning EFI for a dyno tune? Because you have to somehow get the stuff out of the learn table and into the actual table that matters, the VE table, the spark table. Um, it, it's not as straightforward as people would have you. It, it works very well, and it's very easy, and it's come a long ways. Don't get me wrong. It's not a nightmare. But you still have to have your wits about you. You still have to be willing to gain or have some experience in order to tune EFI. The fine control offered by EFI is superior. And, and what people mean by that is EFI constantly adapts. Um, you know, you have your O2 sensors, you have your map sensor, you have your throttle position sensor, and everything feeds back and to making sure that you have the perfect air-fuel ratio at all times. And that is accurate 
in a way that the EFI is better at that. That's also what all the different idle circuit and the accelerator pump circuit. It's what all the, the secondary circuit is, what all the different circuits in a carburetor are for as well. Is that's their way of band-aiding like, hey, we need to add fuel here. We need to pull it out there. Um, so they're pretty adaptable throughout the range too, but it is easier to tune EFI throughout the range. And EFI does, even factor EFI has, you know, adaptability throughout the range. But as you saw in Richard's test, it just doesn't matter. When you get out in the real world where the rubber meets the road, it just doesn't matter. So, number five, it's just as expensive to go with a car. It depends. If we're talking about an LS engine, engine that is true. Um, if you're buying... If you're buying engines the way that I recommend you buy them, which is a runner, complete, throttle body to oil pan, the full factory harness and PCM, and then you use HP tuners or PCM hammers to tune it, you know, for free or, or for very little cost, um, it's going to cost more to go with a carb. Even if you do like a simple spark and you get the buddy deal on an intake and you already have a carb, um, which by the way, these brawler carbs from uh, Quirt Fuel, I think that Holly bought them up. That's what they tend to do with any competitors. But these are pretty affordable nowadays. Carbs, like a Holly XP is like seven, 800 bucks nowadays. Um, but yeah, it can cost more. My, my Magnum, um, that intake, the carb intake alone was $450. And I got, I got lucky and got a mechanical secondary carb out of the junkyard. But uh, it can be pretty costly to go with a carb but again it depends on what you're more comfortable with and what your ultimate goal is um another thing that i would if you want to use electronic automatic overdrive transmissions if you want to use a 4l80 if you want to use a 4l60 or or whatever with a carb you're gonna have to do a standalone transmission and i've seen people get into the situation where they they thought they were going to go with a carb because it was easier because all they have to do is hook up a fuel line, but then they don't know how to tune a carb. So then they go to some like Phytech or, or Sniper or whatever. Um, and then they want a tr transmission controller. So, you know, because now they want overdrive and they want lockup. So now they got a standalone controller for their 4080 and they, they got a standalone self learning EFI on top of their carb intake on their LS. And it's like the dumbest possible way you could have just used, you know, Plan ahead, think ahead. Like I always say, be realistic about your goals, about your ability, and, and think about this. Um, carbs are not garbage. They're not toilet bowls. They work just fine. They still work just fine. Um, and EFI, if we're talking about a swap vehicle, it's probably a little more affordable if you don't have stuff. Um, again, you can use the fuel system off the carb. There's a lot of pros and cons that you just really have to work through. But don't discount either one, really, for, for your uses. The simplest thing to do is, you know, use what you're most comfortable with. So hopefully that guy helps you guys out if you're trying to make a decision, if you've been thinking over this stuff. Uh, it's a little bit of a longer video, and I feel like I rambled a bit. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it was worthwhile for you, and uh, I hope to see you next time on The Driveway Engineer. You guys have a good weekend.